I am sad to report that um, Cornell West, somebody who I have long respected and still respect, it seems as if Cornell West is now trying to go after some of RFK's voters now that RFK is out of the race. And we'll get into this exchange. But I want to show you, you know, what Cornell West is replying to, because you have RFK saying, so grateful to you, Cornell, for a commitment to ending corruption. Okay, that sounds great, you know, on its face, but what corruption is he talking about? You have Cornell saying, thank you, my dear brother Robert Kennedy Jr. We must fight against all forms of corruption, greed, hatred, and genocide. God bless you and your precious family. This looks super innocuous, right? Fighting against hatred and genocide, well, awesome, but this dude is very, very pro-genocide. In fact, you can argue he's more vociferously pro-Palestinian genocide than both Trump and Joe Biden. Um, so what exactly is he commending Cornell West for? Well, he's replying to this video of Cornell West, where Cornell West is very, um, very clearly pandering to uh, anti-vaxxers, which broke my fucking heart to see this. Because Cornell West is one of the most brilliant people ever. But this just goes to show you that it doesn't matter how smart you are, um, anyone can succumb to conspiracy theories. And maybe he doesn't even believe it. Like, that's the, the best, most charitable interpretation, that he's just pandering for votes. Either way, what he says here is, is so depressing. Let's just watch. I want to speak to my brothers and sisters of all colors who are concerned about not just the vaccine, but the role of the pharmaceutical company in shaping public policy, not allowing the various voices to be heard, the role of censorship, the attempt to impose closure on various voices that would help us understand what's really going on when it comes to health care policy vis-a-vis -vis vaccine. I want a true commission to find out what happened in the past, and I want to make sure that each and every one of us have fair access to the truth. Okay. So, you can interpret this in a number of ways. You could say he just wants more transparency. But if you look at the replies, the people who are replying, Roger Stone, for example... They're interpreting this as, oh, thank God, Cornell West is uh, – he's speaking a language that, I, uh, that I'm familiar with. He's talking about the COVID-19 vaccines, right? Uh, and I think that that is a reasonable interpretation. If Cornell West were to say, listen, I want to talk about you know the corruption in Big Pharma with regard to price fixing. That's a real scandal. I want to talk about the COVID vaccines and how pharmaceutical companies – they refused to release the patents so that way developing countries could develop their own, you know, generic versions of the COVID vaccines. I mean, how many lives would have been spared if that happened? But he's not saying that. He's saying he wants a truth commission. And he specifically at the beginning is talking to people who are concerned about the vaccine and the role the pharmaceutical companies play in shaping public policy. Yeah, they play a role in shaping public policy. But you have to explain what role they're playing, because if you just leave it vague, you're going to kind of create the space for conspiracy theorists and anti-vaxxers to assume that you're speaking to them. And I think that's a reasonable assumption, right? The scandal isn't that, you know, um, these pharmaceutical companies are manufacturing poison. The scandal is that they're creating life-saving medications and vaccines and... Poor people don't have access to them. People in developing countries don't have access to them. These pharmaceutical companies collude and they engage in price fixing. So that way they all raise the price simultaneously of a particular drug. I mean, capitalism is supposed to be about the market, right? But there's no free market there if all of these corporations are fixing prices. And then, you know, they donate to the campaigns of politicians so that way they don't regulate price gouging and price fixing. So there's a lot of scandals with regard to pharmaceutical companies, right? Big Pharma is bad. Big Pharma should not be something that's private. We should nationalize pharmaceutical companies. That's not what Cornell West is saying. He's saying something very different. He is saying that 
maybe you were right to think that the COVID vaccine was bad. Maybe it was wrong to censor people who were talking about the vaccine being bad. Now, I don't necessarily know what specifically he's referring to when it comes to censorship, um, because if you're on a platform like YouTube and you spread misinformation about a vaccine, uh, yeah, the algorithm is going to push that down. But like when you when you when you think about censorship, you think about Joe Rogan and, you know, him saying that he didn't take the vaccine when he got COVID, he took ivermectin and anybody who was criticizing him were saying, oh, you just support censorship. I mean, I don't really remember any, you know, any person calling for censorship. When I criticized him, I didn't say he should be deplatformed. I said, like, he should be fucking serious and actually do his research because he's speaking to millions of people. So the censorship thing, um, I kind of feel like it's a red herring because, you know, I think that somebody getting banned on Twitter for saying vaccines are poison um, not the biggest free speech issue of our time, right? You can say that you disagree with that and that it's un -ish an issue and people should be free to spread misinformation. But when I think about like the biggest free speech issues, I think about BDS. Um, so Cornell West here, let's be clear. He is speaking to fringe people. He is speaking to conspiracy theorists. And this is devastating to me. This is a man who I have respected more than anyone else in politics. Perhaps more so than Bernie Sanders. He's just been around and everything he said has been so inspirational. And the only question is, does he know what he's doing? I would argue, yeah, I think that he he knows what he's doing and it's cynical because he's trying to get votes. That's what I think is happening here. This presidential run for Cornell West, I hate to say it, has thoroughly discredited him to a lot of people. I will never forget the great things that he taught me and all the wonderful things that he said and what he stands for overall at his core. But this presidential campaign, what a fucking disaster. What a disaster. It started off with him running in the People's Party, and then he runs in the Green Party, and then he runs as an independent, and then he formed his own party. It's like, bro, just pick a fucking party. Like, it's it doesn't even matter at the end of the day. Like, what you're trying to do, I'm assuming by running is exert pressure on the Democratic Party. So, like, does it matter what party you're in? Either way, it's going to be a struggle to get ballot access. But, like, what are you even doing? It looks so unserious. You have to stick with the party, right? But aside from that, there's the scandals. There's the donations that he took from Harlan Crow. Why are you taking donations from Harlan Crow? This dude has Nazi memorabilia in his home. Why would you want anything to do with that individual? Why would you call him your brother? This man should be fucking, his assets should be seized. Nobody should have a billion dollars in it. You're buddy, buddy with them. Why? Why? Now, one thing that Cornell West shared was really interesting to me. So he went on status coup and apparently Kamala Harris's campaign made him a really interesting offer. And I want to play what he says and then I want to react. And uh, can you specify, if you can, you mentioned uh, offering positions, resources. Uh, were you offered a position in the Harris administration? Any financial incentives to drop out? Oh, I mean, there was definitely various kind of offers. I won't go into the concrete details of it. I, I really won't because I don't, I, I don't even want to make that the uh, focus. Well, let's it. let's just say but they did not say they did they did not off, they did not offer you the janitor's position. They offered you something <laughs> something something relatively high up. Uh, well, uh, I don't think it was that high up because believe me, brother, the highest position in the in the empire that can't say a word about genocide. For me, it's just a place in Dante's Inferno, man. And that's the lowest litmus test of morality to oppose genocide. And when you deny genocide, when you actually enable genocide, uh, uh, that cannot be the only option to fascism. Right. Did they uh, just one more on this? Did they uh, sure. offer you? Did they offer you uh, a cabinet position, a lower position, and offer to pay off any of your campaign debt? Well, they they offered serious substantive conversation about all of those. That could lead toward some real gotcha. You know what I mean? So the Harris campaign actually wants to seriously bring him in, um, give him a position in the administration if he drops out and endorses, kind of similar to what we saw 
with um, you know RFK Jr. and Trump. Now RFK, he was also trying to get the Kamala Harris campaign to do just that, but you know they said no. They had no incentive to have him drop out and endorse Harris because he was taking more votes away theoretically from Donald Trump, right? But in terms of like Cornell West getting the software, this is really interesting to me because he's polling at 0.6%. He has no chance of winning the White House. So he's given a really interesting opportunity here, right? He can either lose this election, get zero electoral votes, um, get less than a percent, uh, or he can actually get power within the Harris administration and pressure her in a really meaningful way. And if for whatever reason she doesn't listen and she's still complicit with the genocide, you can hold her even more accountable being in the administration, not only by exerting internal pressure on her, but embarrassing her by resigning. This is what Biden administration officials have been doing. Every time they resign, there's headlines about a Biden administration official resigning and condemning him. You could actually make a real difference here. Now, we don't really know the details. I'm speculating about what position he would be given. We don't know. Maybe advisor, maybe head of some department. We genuinely, genuinely don't know, right? So it's all speculation. It's conjecture. Having said that, though, I mean, you've won. If you are getting offered a position in an administration for a simple endorsement, you've won. Now, you can argue, to be fair to Cornell West, that maybe he's doing this. He's, he's rejecting it because it seems like he did. He's rejecting it because he thinks that he can have more leverage over the Harris administration as an outsider, right? He could say, look, I'm taking more votes away on the outside, so you should bend to what I want. That's entirely plausible, but I don't think that's the case. Um, he's not pulling enough votes away for them to be genuinely afraid, but he's pulling enough votes away for them to at least think, you know what, it's Cornell West. Maybe we should bring him in and listen. That's a big thing. That's a, that's a really big deal. So the fact that he wouldn't want to be a part of that to me is a little bit bizarre because I feel like the whole point in running, you know, as an independent is to to put pressure on the Democratic Party. And that doesn't necessarily mean that by bringing you in, they would co-opt you because, you know, if you're as, you know, uh, steadfast and strong in your values, you have nothing to worry about. You won't be corrupted or co-opted. So you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. But he's saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Now, I get it. You know, he alluded to the fact that he does, doesn't want to sacrifice his principles, right? He doesn't want to work for an administration that's doing genocide. I hear you. But you've already kind of sacrificed your principles in certain ways, haven't you? You took big, big money from Harlan Crow. You are now pandering to anti-vaxxers. The humiliation hasn't stopped. So why wouldn't you at least work with this administration that wants to work with you? Building power is the way that you affect change. This is one thing that I think leftists just don't get or really don't take seriously. But the goal in politics is to get power. You have an opportunity to have power. Nobody gets this opportunity. And you're like, eh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get my 0.6%. I mean, I don't get it. I genuinely don't get it. You have another option. There's Jill Stein on the ballot. You know, if somebody uh, like him doesn't want to give people, you know, uh, less options, if somebody is adamant about voting sincerely uh, and they don't want to support Kamala Harris because of her policies on Gaza, there's already an option. There's Jill Stein. They could vote for Jill Stein, right? So I don't get why he wouldn't just take this up because he could actually make a difference. But he's choosing to just like, be like, nope, I don't want to do it. I don't get it. I genuinely don't get it. So what I'm going to do to make myself feel better is uh, as soon as this campaign is over, I'm going to pretend like it never happened. Never, never happened, right? I'm going to I'm gonna delete that shit from my brain uh, because it's too painful, it is too painful to think that, you know, this person who I admired and looked up to for so long and still respect, by the way, and admire this person, uh, you know, who has been a hero to me. You know, maybe he's not as amazing as I thought, or at least as he was right. Either way, real fucking depressing shit here. Uh, I, I guess the lesson is never have heroes in politics. Because, you know, once somebody becomes a politician, 
I kind of feel like they sacrifice at least a small portion of their humanity. And it doesn't matter what policies they're espousing or what party they're a part of. You know, you, you die a little bit inside in certain ways once you become a politician. So, you know, when you cross that that threshold, you have to view these folks differently. And, you know, it's no different with regard to even somebody like Cornell West, which, again, so depressing because if you've watched this show for years, you know how much I look up to and respect Cornell West. So to see him do things like this is so fucking heartbreaking to me. Like everywhere there's glue, mama. you see them all the time. I mean, it's constant. Mama. My children will be like, Mama, glue, 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 glue. I turn mama. on TV, there's glue in the background. Every TV show, news media, glue, wow. Glue, 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 They're everywhere. Glue, 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 glue,